My name is Ben Song. I'm from Arlington, Texas. My dad is originally from South Korea, and my mom is of Japanese descent. My name's Andy. I'm from the West Coast of the United States. Back in America, I was a third year college student, and I took a semester off to come here to Hong Kong. Hong Kong's anti-government protests have captured the world's attention. While China has accused foreign countries of interfering in Hong Kong's affairs, protesters have been calling for international support and often appealing directly to the United States. As U.S. lawmakers consider legislation that would keep a closer eye on the city's autonomy, some Americans are taking a more hands-on approach by flying all the way to Hong Kong to offer their support to protesters. Well, I've been watching the protests for months. It was really moving. It was easy for me to relate to. They were Asian people under a Western system and just faced with this unimaginable authoritarianism and, and bravely fighting back. And I thought to myself all that time, you know, I wish I was over there. I wish I could support them. I'm uh, half Vietnamese and half Hong Konger. Uh, my mom is Vietnamese. She fled Vietnam after South Vietnam fell from the Communist Party. And so already being firsthand a, a product of, of communist rule in Vietnam, the fact that I'm in the United States is a direct cause of that. So seeing it happen to Hong Kong, which is the other half of my identity, definitely resonated within me. I felt like I had to do something. I was just driving Uber. That's the main thing I do. I bought them uh, about five days ahead of time. I guess I was nervous, a little bit scared, very excited. I've always kind of thought of myself as a person who puts their money where their mouth is. Growing up, my friends that were Asian, we were all kind of Asian together. We all kind of felt a oneness, a shared experience that we didn't necessarily choose, um, but it definitely existed. I believe in you know, international solidarity with all kinds of people, but as a child, that was just something that I think naturally existed. I've done one trip to Taiwan um, on one weekend just to um, buy supplies that are out of stock in Hong Kong. Um, but usually every other weekend, I'm on the streets handing out supplies, money in terms of like vouchers, like food vouchers if I can. Just being there and just helping the movement gain momentum. Second night was my first protest. It was very peaceful. Uh, it was very relaxed, sitting in a circle, chanting, listening to speakers. I didn't see any violence at all. It reminded me of the 4th of July. The second night I went back and it was totally different. I think I went from peaceful innocence to fear to anger. One of my friends said, you're not going to make a big difference by being there. And it's probably true that, you know, if I was removed from the equation, things would be pretty much the same. But maybe a hundred me's or a thousand me's would make a difference, and that's what I want to try and be a part of. The one thing that really bothers me is that there have been some mob beatings of hecklers. And I don't think that's okay whatsoever. But I definitely don't condemn the vandalism of hostile corporations. It's not ideal, but uh, I think it's justified. I'm planning on being here until at least the end of this semester, so the end of December. At times you never know really if anything's gonna happen, if what you're doing will actually matter in the end. If nothing happens, then did I just get pushed back four months of my life? That thought always gets shot down pretty quickly in my head because you can't always rely on certainty to like guide you through life. So. If it's something that you stand behind, you should just go for it. Ben and Andy both deny being involved in violence while in Hong Kong. After two weeks here, Ben is back home in Texas. To try to explain, you know, clashes in the streets and, um, you know, just how crazy it is, the fear and the excitement, all of that. Certainly everyone wanted to hear all about it, but they may not have been able to understand it. I realized this is a desperate struggle for a lot of people. 
and at the end of the day, I'm gonna fly home and return to a normal life. As soon as I got back home, I was like, okay, how do I get back 